Most people are trying to lose fat with outdated methods. Endless cardio, crash diets, overpriced fat burners that barely move the needle. But right now, there's a silent revolution that's going on behind the scenes. Athletes, biohackers, and everyday professionals are using peptides to burn fat, preserve muscle, and completely change the way that their body looks and feels. And the wild part? Probably haven't heard of half of the ones that I'm about to tell you. This isn't about shortcuts, it's about science-backed tools that actually work. If you're tired of spinning your wheels and want an edge that most people don't even know exists yet, keep watching. These are the top six fat loss peptides and one of them might be the missing link for your transformation. There would be no video talking about fat loss peptides on YouTube if we did not mention the one and only retitrutide. So that's the one that we're going to start with first. And so what is retitrutide? What is it exactly? How does it work? What's with all the hype behind this? So if you've heard of semaglutide and you've heard of trisepatide, which they call that Ozempic, Wegovy, we Zetbound, Monjero. Those are what we call GLP-1. Terzepatide is a little bit different because it targets GLP-1 and the GIP receptors. And that's where retitrutide comes in and that's what makes retitrutide so different. Retitrutide is a triple agonist, meaning it hits three powerful fat loss pathways, the GLP-1, the GIP, and what makes it different than the others is the glucagon receptors. So in simple terms, it kills your appetite, it improves your insulin sensitivity, and it boosts fat burning all at the same time, you burn more energy while just sitting still. Think of it like combining the benefits of semaglutide and trisepatide and then adding a third metabolic accelerator. GLP-1 reduces hunger. GIP improves how your body handles carbs. Glucagon ramps up your fat oxidization and energy output. And so that triple combo hits both subcutaneous and visceral fat, which is the dangerous fat that's around your organ. And so what does the research say about all this? In a 2025 phase two trial, participants lost up to 24% of their total body weight over 48 weeks. That's significantly more than what we've seen from semaglutide or trisepatide. And it's not just weight. The studies are showing real reduction in fat mass, waist circumference, and even liver fat. I mean, you can see people's DEXA scans. You can see their triglycerides going down. You can see their HDL going up, their LDL to HDL ratio improving across the board. And since it's technically not FDA approved yet, other people are still using it what are they saying about it anecdotally users report 20 to 25 percent weight loss over a year especially when paired with protein and strength training which i suggest you highly do some even say it made them feel like eating was just optional like they just weren't hungry and just like with everything that's good there are going to be some side effects most commonly is going to be gastro stuff so things like nausea constipation sometimes diarrhea Fatigue early on, headache can show up, uh, but usually it fades as the body adjusts. It's dose dependent. Some people re report a like sunburned skin feeling on their skin. As far as dosing goes, it's cl in clinical trials, it's once weekly injections. Doses usually start around two to two and a half uh, milligrams and titrate up all the way to 10 to 12. As somebody that's new to GLP ones, I would suggest not medical advice starting at 0.5 milligrams per week and working your way up from there. Some people can handle 1.5 and don't hand, feel anything at all, but everybody is different when it comes to this to, to Reta True Tide. So just make sure that you start slow if you're going to start it. Then next up is one of the most exciting and experimental compounds on the fat loss radar, and that is SLUPP32. SLU is what scientists call an exercise mimetic, meaning it mimics some of the effects of cardio without actually exercising. It's a beta three, adrenergic receptor and ERR agonist, which is just fancy talk for, it targets receptors involved in fat metabolism, energy regulation, and mitochondrial activation. So how, does that, how exactly does it work? The compound activates brown fat thermogenesis. That's the type of fat that actually burns energy to generate heat. It also ramps up mitochondrial biogenesis so your cells get better at producing energy, especially from fat. In some of the studies that they've done so far, it's been in mice, and in mice it literally shifted their metabolism towards fat oxidization even when they weren't moving more or eating less, which is pretty crazy. What exactly does the research say? A 2023 preclinical study showed obese mice lost 18 to 24 percent of their body weight over a few weeks, but here's the kicker. They didn't eat less, their appetite stayed the same, but their bodies just burned more energy. And there is a new study in 2025 of human data. Researchers conducted a pilot study on 20 elderly women undergoing a hip replacement surgery from January to June 2024. Don't ask me how they come up with who to target for this in this particular peptide, but um, dividing them into active and inactive groups based on self-reported physical activity. And here's what they found. SLUPP32 literally reprogrammed age, 
sedentary muscle cells back to youthful exercise adapted states. And so with every good thing, there are going to be some side effects. So far, it's very limited data because there's not a lot of human trials on it. In animals, it was well tolerated from anecdotal use, from users reporting it on Reddit or different social media websites. The main complaint is fatigue after the compound wears off like an energy dip post caffeine. But again, this is early stage and should be treated as, as experimental. If you were to take it, what would be the dose that you should take? In mouse studies, the oral dose was around 30 milligrams per kilogram per day, which translates to about 200 to 250 milligrams per day for a 200 pound human. Most anecdotal users are reporting taking between 100 to 300 milligrams per day, usually fasted in the morning. I personally am taking 250 milligrams in the afternoon. And again, there is no official human dosing and this should strictly be considered research use only. I admit it, this one's still in the wild west, but imagine a compound that makes your body burn fat like it's doing cardio without touching the treadmill and that's the potential here, but let's jump into the next one. Next up, we have one of the most potent oral fat loss compounds in clinical development and that is tesofencine. And this this one is actually giving GLPs a run for their money when it comes to weight loss. And it's oral, it's not injections. Tesofencine is a triple reuptake inhibitor, meaning it blocks the reabsorption of dopamine, norepinephrine, and serotonin, which just so happen to be some of my favorite neurotransmitters and the ones that I like to get the most of if I can get them. It suppresses appetite and elevates metabolic rate. It works by increasing these neurotransmitters in the brain. It reduces hunger, boosts mood and focus, and slightly increases energy expenditure. Think of it as a potent appetite suppressant with a mild stimulant edge, but without the crash of traditional stimulants. What's the research say? A 24-week phase two trial in obese adults showed placebo plus diet that means they didn't take the tesofencine equal a 2% weight loss. Taking tesofencine at 0.25 milligrams equaled 4.5% weight, weight loss. Taking tesofencine at 0.5 milligrams equaled a 9.2% weight loss. And if you took tesofencine at one milligram, and this is per day, it was 10.6% weight loss. Subjects saw a reduction in waist circumference, improved fat oxidization around 15% in a 24 hour fat burn and better glucose metabolism. What are, what are people saying about it though? What are the users saying? We need to know what people are saying. People on Reddit and other social media websites report starting at 0.25 to 0.5 milligrams and titrating up slowly. One person said, I've been taking tesofencine for about a month on the 500, milligram, on 500 microgram dose, that's 0.5 milligrams, and I already lost 10 pounds which is pretty cool. Another study said users dose from 0.25 milligrams to one milligram daily. Insomnia is a real kicker with a nine day half-life. So that leads me to my next thing, which is side effects. And the common side effects are gonna be dry mouth, nausea, constipation, diarrhea, and unfortunately insomnia in some, some people. At higher doses, there can be modest increase in heart rate, which is just an average of uh, about seven beats per minute and an increase in blood pressure. But it doesn't happen to everybody. Again, these are experimental as well. There's also a theoretical stimulant or dependency risk, so caution is advised. Be careful. And just be careful. So uh, how much should you be taking if you wanted to take it? In trials, people were dosed at 0.25 milligrams to start out with, just like I said before. And after two to four weeks, they increased to 0.5 milligrams. Some protocols go all the way up to one milligram, as I stated in the studies uh, previously, but side effects can rise. And I don't know about you, but I love my sleep and insomnia is really not worth it to, for me to lose fat. So yeah. The next fat loss peptide that we're gonna talk about is the only fat loss peptide on this list that is FDA approved, but it's actually approved for a specific purpose. It's not approved for people like me and you. And that is Tessamorlin. Tessamorlin, brand name Agrifta, is a GHRH analog, basically a modified growth hormone releasing hormone. It's specifically approved to reduce visceral fat in adults with HIV associated lipodystrophy. It works by stimulating your pituitary gland to release endogenous growth hormone. It targets deeper ab abdominal fat. I'm talking about the stuff that's deep down that you can't even see. The type that wraps around your organs known as visceral adipose tissue. And from here on out, we'll refer to that as VAT. Not fat, although it is. In two 26-week placebo-controlled studies, Tessamorlin showed 15% reduction in VAT, which was sustained up to 52 weeks in extension trials. It also notably improved liver fat by 40% and increasing fat density, meaning smaller, healthier fat cells. Increasing fat density doesn't sound good, but it's actually a good thing. Reduction in over 8% of VAT were associated with better triglycerides, glucose control, and waist size. So what are people saying about it that are actually using it that aren't FDA-approved to use it? 
people like me and you. What are they saying? A few, one user says, I take Tessamorlin and Ipermorlin and it's breaking down the visceral fat that hard packed and damn near impossible to get rid of in my stomach which is what it's supposed to do. Another person said, I had a phenomenal response to Tessa Morlin, lost about 7.5 inches on my waistline, which is wild. I mean, you're going from like a 39 to a 32. Uh, I don't do public math, but close enough. Unfortunately, not everybody has a, a great experience with it. One user reported after seven weeks, I've retained a bunch of water, joint pain, and unless you have a good amount of visceral belly fat, I wouldn't waste your money. Let's talk some side effects. Side effects are gonna be relatively mild. Injection site reactions, joint aches. Um, there is something that if you have previous cancer or cancerous cells or anything like that, Tessa Morlin is going to raise your IGF-1 levels. Anything that raises your IGF-1 levels, whether it's Tessa Morlin or anything else, does give you a chance for those cancer cells to grow. So that is something to be aware of. And, you know, some people also report headaches, a uh, slight increase in blood sugar, nothing that is worth really noting. It's very mild, um, but also worth mon monitoring when using for long periods of time. If you were going to take it, how much did you take? So a standard protocol is two milligram subcutaneous injection once daily. You could even start as low as one milligram if you want to start out slow. So if your goal is visceral fat, the deep kind that's linked to metabolic disease, testimonial is the only peptide on our list that's legitimately approved for that specific purpose. Next up, we switch gears and look inside the cell. No more hormone spikes involved. Next up, we have a mitochondrial peptide that works differently than anything else on this list. And yes, it helps burn fat. Let's talk about MOTC. MOTC is short for a big fancy word, um, a lot of words actually. I'm gonna leave it on the screen here so that you can see exactly what it stands for. I'm not gonna attempt to pronounce it, but that's what it is and that's what we're gonna talk about. MOTC is a peptide encoded in your mitochondrial DNA, which makes it different from most other peptides that come from the nucleus. The mitochondrial release MOTC in response to stress, exercise, or fasting, and it plays a key role in how your body handles energy. It works by activating something called the AMPK, the AMPK, which is basically your cell's energy switch, and that triggers fat oxidization, improves insulin sensitivity and even promotes white to brown fat conversion which boosts thermogenesis so instead of suppressing appetite like most fat loss peptides MOTC works by helping your cells burn more fat efficiently from the inside out so what's the research talking about in mice and I know we have to research on mice that's just the way that it is uh, in mice on a half high fat diet MOTC prevented obesity and improved glucose metabolism without any reduction in food intake a 2025 study on diabetic rats showed that it delayed weight gain and improved mitochondrial function and increased endurance. Some studies also suggest it can reduce liver fat and improve metabolic flexibility, meaning your body gets better at switching to, to fat for fuel. And now no, yeah, yeah, study this and study that, clinical trials, but what are people actually saying about it that are really in the real world taking it? Users and biohackers who've tried MOTC say they've noticed steady body recomposition, more energy and even better endurance but not rapid fat loss the appetite stays normal so it's not uh you'll forget to eat kind of compound like retitrutide it's more like a fat burning optimizer that runs in the background as far as side effects are concerned it's well tolerated some people report injection site irritation mild palpitations or insomnia if taken too late in the day so i would advise taking it early uh, but those reports are minor and few and far between there's no serious side effects uh, that have shown up in the literature yet. Still, it's early and long-term safety in humans isn't really confirmed, but they're still doing studies. If you were to take this, not medical advice, but most people start their protocols off between two to five milligrams subcutaneously, two to three times a week, not every day. It's often taken fasted either in the morning or before cardio to potentially amplify fat oxidization. If you're already doing the things of exercising and if your appetite's already in check, you got your diet in check and you wanna optimize fat burning at the cellular level without messing up your hormones, MOTC could be the move for you. Last, but definitely not least, this one doesn't mess with your hunger, your hormones, or your nervous system. It works on fat loss at the cellular level and the results are impressive. So let's get into 5-amino-1-MQ. 5-amino-1-MQ is a small molecule that inhibits an enzyme called NNMT, which is nicotinamide, nicotinamide, I can't pronounce it all. I'll leave it right here. You can try to pronounce it if you want to, but why does that matter? Because NNMT activity tends to be higher in white adipose tissue and it's associated with slower metabolism, insulin resistance, and fat gain, especially visceral fat. So when you block that enzyme, you free up NAD plus production, which kickstarts a chain reaction, better mitochondrial function, improved insulin signaling, and higher energy expenditure, 
even while you're resting. How exactly does that work for fat loss? Here's where it gets exciting. An obese mice fed a high fat diet. Researchers gave them 5-amino-1-MQ for just 11 days. The results? A 5.1% body weight loss, 35% reduction in fat mass, and significant shrinking of fat cells, all without any reduction in food intake. Sign me up. Basically, their body started using more energy and storing less fat without eating less or moving more, which is a general trend with all these peptides. Another study using a slightly different dosing schedule confirmed it also prevented weight gain even when the animals stayed on a Western style diet. I'm talking about gravy and biscuits, uh, sausage, eggs, and some waffles, and a lot of grease. So we know the studies, but what are people saying about it? And this is one of the most popular underground fat loss compounds in the biohacking circles, especially for people who are already leaner and want to optimize body recomp without suppressing appetite or messing around with their hormones. Some users report more energy, easier time leaning out, and subtle but consistent visual improvements in fat distribution. One person wrote, five amino is helping with the last five to 10 pounds, appetite is normal, energy feels cleaner, and there's no stem crash. Others stack it with peptides like AOD9604 or CJC and ipoprenorelin to amplify the effects. It's also growing in the anti-aging world due to its link with NAD plus production, which ties into longevity and metabolic health. As far as side effects goes, uh, most people tolerate it well, but some people report mild nausea or GI discomfort, especially at higher doses. Some report fatigue or lightheadedness. Uh, a small group of people report slight headaches or mood dips if taken too frequently. Because it's a small molecule, it acts systemically. So it's smart to start low and titrate up. If you wanted to take this yourself, most people are starting their protocols out at 50 to 100 milligrams daily. This is taken orally. It's not an injection peptide. Some split the dose in the morning and afternoon to maintain blood levels. Popular cycles are five days on and two off, or four to six weeks on, two weeks off to prevent tolerance. It's also being studied as an injectable, but oral capsules are far more common and effective due to high bioavailability. If you're already dialed in with diet and training, but metabolism still feels sluggish, 5-amino-1-NQ may help tip the scale by working under the hood at the cellular level. Similar to MOTC, also something you could stack it with. All right, so we just went deep on six of the most powerful fat loss peptides available right now, but how do you know which one is right for you? Let's break that down. If your hunger is out of control, I would go with retitrutide. You could also go with tesofensine if you're not wanting to do injectables. They both suppress appetite, but retitrutide also helps with insulin sensitivity and body recomposition. Tesofensine is oral, stimulant-based, and better if you hate needles. If you want to target stubborn belly fat or visceral fat, tessamorlin is clearly the winner. It's the only peptide with FDA backing for reducing organ hugging fat and helping with liver health. If you want a performance edge and metabolic boost without messing with your hunger or hormones, that's going to be MOTC or 5-amino-1-MQ. They work on the cellular level, think energy, fat oxidation, and body recomp without appetite suppression. And if you want something experimental and cutting edge that is also going to help boost your metabolism without doing anything and exercise mimetic, then SLU PP32 is the wild card that you need. Still in an early stage, but the potential is insane. Like I said, it literally mimics exercise at the gene expression level. And if you want to know more about retitrutide specifically, I have a playlist that I'm going to show right here. There's going to be videos that you can watch. If you want to get more information on retitrutide, make sure you subscribe.